Hello, welcome back to another uh, Pixel on Draft. I'm drafting, that's what I'm doing, I'm drafting. Um, oh wow, insta-queue, insta rare, rare on Arena. Common on Magic Online, rare on Arena, wow, just, just so fast today. We're just getting right into it. All right, and we're getting right into it with an interesting rare that is good, a good card, There's a lot of good cards in this pack. There's Inti, Staunch Crewmate, Xenoid Scout are good, Pirate's decent. Hope to wheel either Pirate or sun, 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 Sunshot Militia, either of which would be acceptable. Um, hold on. I know, I know I'm taking Inti, but I just want to see. I just want to see the stats, okay? I just want to see the stats, because I like looking at them when I draft, because like if they're really, really bad for some reason, yeah, they're not. Okay, they're cracked. The card's good. <laughs> yep, the card that looks good is good. Um, so this is interesting. Um, we did caves. I did caves yesterday. I'm not. I'm not doing this. I think I'm between Market Gnome and Iceberg. Inti goes in any deck, but it is better in more aggressive decks. Neither of these cards is like super aggro. Aggro. Um, I've been pretty impressed with Market Gnome. Iceberg does win more. Again, what can I wheel here? Not, I mean, I guess I could wheel Blunder. I'm not taking Monster Sewer. This card, you kind of, like, I think I'm going to take the Iceberg. I don't know. This, uh, this is a tough pick, because, and actually, hold on. I guess I could take the Market Gnome, because you can play it, like, I mean, it's not that bad with, like, I, mean, I should just take the, the better card. I don't know which of these is the better card. They're, they're both good. Um, so I'll, I'll take the Gnome. We'll, we'll try out the Gnome. We'll see how it goes now. I'm just going to take Scythe Claw Raptor. Nice solid card, uh, good in every deck, and uh, happy to have. All right, well now I'm taking the staunch crewmate because that card is just super busto. Um, I don't actually have any pirates right now, but I'm not worried about that restriction being a problem. Oh baby, we're just the draft is just on rails. We're just on the rails right now. We are riding the rails. Um, this is a pick that I don't think matters very much. Benthosaur is fine. Again, I don't have any pirates for this, so I do actually want to get some artifacts on pirates, but uh, we're not, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that, that uh, bridge when we come to it. I think if I, I mean, I I guess I'll take this in case like this turns, this isn't like a control deck though, but I'll, I'll take this guy. Promising Vein is kind of like what's necessary for this thing to be functional, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Cog work, yes, very good card. An artifact as well. Not the best hit off crewmate, but we we live and we we breathe, you know. Oh wow, we're just actually it's kind of unclear whether this is better or this is better, but I, I do think the scout is better. This card is like uber busted. Again, not perfect with staunch crewmate, but if you just put good cards in your deck, that's good. I I think we're <laughs> I think we are well on our way. I could even I mean I technically could end up blue right white here. You know, I could. But these red cards are very strong. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have them. The Scythe Claw Raptor really, you know, makes it difficult for your opponent. I'll take, we'll take the Pirate. Um, so this is is fine, but I think the Pirate's better with the Crewmate, and, um, just in blue-red generally, I think this, this is a better card. Uh, it is a little concerning that my three drops, there's so many of them, but they're all very good, so that's not as concerning, right? Um... I have one pirate, and I have two pirate. Well, one pirate I can find off of this. I'm not super worried about it, like getting that. Oh, the iceberg came back too, huge. I thought it might. That's kind of that's another reason I took the market gnome as well in pack one. There is that at this stage of the format, people don't know how good iceberg is, so it still wheels a decent percentage of the time. I don't really think it should ever wheel. It goes in every deck. I know it looks kind of like, oh, it's a slow whatever card. I mean, maybe like the most like perfect not so like blue red deck I, it could not go in that deck and you, but like even that deck you'd play it like it wouldn't be bad like decks just aren't at least the decks that i draft just aren't that fast you know they may be fast but they're not so fast like so blisteringly fast that you can't play an inverted iceberg um in deck and it, it does so much just so many little things like the fact that it mills a card is actually kind of huge um just because 
like getting it can get like permanence into your graveyard and it like enables itself sometimes it's like sometimes you hit an artifact with the mill and then you can just craft for basically free which is just great so uh yeah feeling pretty good about this start uh no interaction other than cog work at the moment which is fine not something that's like an enormous priority so torch versus sentry sentry's a pirate i think i will take the torch though I don't know, this is kind of close. Let me just actually check. Sentry, and then I can check in blue red. Hold on. Alright, torch is better in blue red, apparently. I that was my instinct was that it was better. Um Sentry's fine. Like, they both get fetched off of this. I do, again, I do have no interactions, so that was another consideration where I was like, eh, it would be kind of nice to have it, like, even though Torch isn't, like, premium or anything. I do have two flyers on three that I can use with it. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure, not gonna play that, but... Certainly legal. I don't think I'm playing this in, like, any world either. I would need, like, a lot of caves. I need, like, what, four caves to play this thing? And it's also a six drop in my deck that is like all one man, one to three mana spells at the moment. So, um, the nice thing about the Waterwind Scouts is that you can kind of treat them like four drops if you like want, which is, you know, it's nice to have cards like this that's like, oh man, you have so many three drops. But the reality is, this can be a three drop and it can be your four drop. So, it's, uh, it's good. Oh, Puzzle Door coming back. Last pick. You'd love to see it. Oh, okay. Oh, we're just running it back here. More cream. I'm just I'm just running back the pirate deck I drafted, where I just get like four of these guys. Um, happy to wheel either of the two playable red cards. Visage is probably the best card in this pack, or crewmate. It's actually close between these, which is better. Pack one, pick one. I would take crewmate just because I'd rather be blue than black right now. But uh, second market gnome also for the for the market gnome enjoyers amongst us. So these now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they have plenty of hits. I did, again, in that deck that trophied with these, I did miss a couple of times with the pirates. So it, it can happen. I'm just going to keep rolling on here now. And nothing really super interesting. Confounding Riddle has underperformed my expectations. It's a it's a card that is good, but just doesn't really fit in this format. Um, the reason for that... Oh, this is actually... Do I ever take the Waylaying Pirates? Um, because people don't respect this card. This is like a meta call. Because this card is more likely to get taken by people in this pod. And is a... You know what? I'm going to take the pirates. Cogwork is a better card. But it's more likely to come back. Uh, ooh, a braid. Mm, a braid versus tomb raider is kind of interesting. I'm going to take a braid. <laughs> but, uh... Tomb raider, kind of close. Tali's favor. Oh, this is actually a tough pick. I'm going to just take the waterwood scout. Make an artifact, you know, whatever. Totally favor good though. Master's Guide Mural also good. Puzzle door playable in the style of deck. Um, so yeah, the the reason I took the pirates over the Cogwork Wrestler, despite me thinking that the Cogwork Wrestler is a better card, is one that it's more likely to wheel, because people underrate it more than they underrate this card for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, two, there is some diminishing returns with Cogwork Wrestlers. Like when you have two of them in your hand, like yes. They kind of, like, play well together, but they also kind of don't, because you have, like, all these one mana things, and... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's possible that it's, like, straight up just wrong. Like, it might just be, like, straight up, like, never correct um, situation. Um, there are no red cards in that pack, notable, notably. I took Iceberg over a land, because... I mean, despite the fact that I think this deck's going to be great... Uh, and, like, I don't think it's good that the Iceberg is a bad enough card that I should be taking uh, land over it at this stage when I'm not 100% sure that my playables are going to be, like, premium, premium, you know? This is kind of interesting. I think Shipwreck Sentry is the best card. I mean, the Blunder's okay. It's not great in this style of deck. The Scallywag... I'm in blue-red, right? Yeah. The Blunder has, like, insanely good stat. Like, it has an insane win rate, TBH. I'll take it. I don't know. It, it 
it's performing better than the other cards by a considerable margin. And it's performing that way for top players as well. It's one of the things I investigated. Because I was like, I was wondering where it shook out among the blue commons. And I was like, hmm, this is doing better than I thought. Now, this would have been a reason not to take it. I think I want Torch here. Go for the second one. They do get worse in multiples. And it's findable. I don't know. Maybe that's stupid. This guy, he's fine. I might not play him in this deck. Cogwork comes back. You'd love to see that. And that's, again, that's why we didn't take it. Oh, you can see that pack, too. Like, lane's just wide open. The lane is just wide open, baby. It is just wide. Blue-red is open as the eye, eye can see, you know? Just as... Oh, but I've, no. No, you're coming back. You're not leaving. You're not leaving. You're not freaking leaving. All right, we have a two-pack deck here. Literally could play, like, this with a two-pack deck, and it would be, like, totally fine. <laughs> so generally when you get a two-pack deck it means that your third pack is terrible Oh man, I have to pass this busted rare <laughs> Maybe the only time I'll open it in the entire format This card is super busted though um, I'm not going to try to find a way to play it because my deck is cracked um, But yeah, super super good card uh, Basically completely unbeatable And uh, that's it, so now we, have a, now we have our deck Will the deck get better? Likely their Scythe Claw Raptor. I'm not going to say no to that. Uh, is there anything else I'm thinking about here, even remotely? No, not not especially. Right, what does that replace? Probably one of the puzzle doors or a torch. Maybe I'll cut a torch first. I kind of want to run, like, not that many torches. I wonder if the puzzle door. The puzzle door is probably worse than torch in this deck, just like straight up, because. I'm not, I don't actually have artifact synergies, really, like, in terms of, like, artifact enter the battlefield synergies, um, so much, like, I just, I have synergies that find artifacts, but I don't have, like, a, the, the, to the signpost on common, um, so, <laughs> so this wield last time, so do I think I can get it to wheel again? Should I even risk it for a careening mine card? A card that is good, but I don't even know if it's better. Like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I honestly don't even care if I get the. Like, I genuinely just don't care. I think I want the the one drop. Uh, Cogwork's gonna wheel anyway, so <laughs> I might as well take the land. <laughs> Uh, sure. I don't, I, I'm not playing a third torch. It's just not happening. I don't necessarily love two tap lands. Like, I may or may not even play the second tap land, given that I have one drops and stuff. Ooh, a braid versus Oaken Siren is actually kind of interesting, but I don't think it's interesting enough to that I, where I'm not taking a braid. I have come down on a braid a little bit. Like, I don't think a braid is super, super busted, but I do think it's probably better than, I mean, got a torch then. I got these braids. How many pirates? Six pirates, and then a bunch of artifacts. Six artifacts, that's 12 hits for these guys. That should be plenty. Mm, honestly, plundering pirates is like maybe the worst card in my deck right now. Oh no, River Hurdled Scout definitely is. <laughs> yeah, that, that card is. And it's not even like bad or anything, like it's like, fine, but it's not good. I am debating whether I want to play both Hidden Volcanoes. I think it's okay. I think it is okay. I do want the one drops, though, with the NT, because then you can attack on turn two, and then... Um... And you can like figure find stuff until you're in the menu next step. I don't know if you're supposed to just jam this and like discard on two. Kind of unclear on the play pattern in terms of limited what's like the best way to approach it. I do again technically need one more playable, but I have playables I can just throw in here. I've got my selection of what I want. Sometimes too much choice, you know. Some might say too much. I'm gonna take Lodestone Needle here. Lodestone Needle's very good. It impressed me quite a bit, so. Took it over a braid because it is the, would be the third copy of a braid. Um, wow, this this is just you know wide wide open spaces out here. Hmm. I guess the question is, is my deck fast enough that I like don't want to play? 
the second hidden volcano? And I think the answer is no, mostly. Right? Like, I do have these one drops, but the, these icebergs go pick me into the mid game. Like, I have Lodestone Needle, I have Staunch Crewmate. I think I'm, like, actually, like, a pretty mid rangey deck. Like, I just, my mana curves low, and right, Torch can leave. <laughs> what about another Torch I don't want? Sure. I don't think I need Torch. Maybe I want Torch over Blunder, though, in this deck. It's findable off of Crewmate. Whereas Blunder isn't. Blunder hits larger things. I have tons of hits though, right? 7 plus 6 is 13. I am going to probably just play both of these. Why not, you know? When in Venice, right? When in Venice. Like, because these things on turn 1, it's not even like that much better than playing them later, because later they have haste. Like, obviously it's good. I think we do want three cog works. Uh, do I want the blunder or do I want the torch? Is the real question. The blunder plays well with the cog works as well. Let's try the blunder out. Let's try it out. Hold on, pause real quick. All right, we're gonna get right into it here. We're just gonna we're just gonna dive right in. The, the deck is ready. <laughs> so I did kind of draft the same deck that I drafted that one time already on this channel, but that's okay. You know what? I drafted caves yesterday. I deserve a reward. I deserve a reward for um, <laughs> for reaching mythic. Oh look, look at me. My account's at mythic now. Yeah. Um. That, uh, that'll happen. That'll happen sometimes. Alright. We begin. It begins. Interesting hand. Keep this one. What do we put back here? Let's put Cogwork back. Put Lodestone. No, I don't want to put Lodestone Needle back. I'm going to put Cogwork back. It's kind of terrible. I'm on the draw, right? Sanj Crewmate draws me a card back. I don't really want to put this back, although maybe I just should. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this, actually. Because then on three, I can... I'm never playing the Cogwork Wrestler here. It's just never happening, so... Okay, Burning Sun Cavalry. Don't love to see that, because it means they're probably going to... I mean, Dinosaurs, Dinosaurs is a good deck. It's a good deck. Bray to go into the bottom, unfortunate. Lodestone Needle, very good against dinosaurs, though. Smashing Brontodon is good against me, no denying that. Uh, hmm. So it's Inti versus Scythe Claw Raptor, I think. I don't really want an Iceberg. Inti's okay. I'm just going to play the Raptor, I think. Ah. I could play Inti and then force a trade with the Cogwork. I don't love that. Like, the thing is that it's still a trade. I, I don't know. Maybe not the best ever. They're probably just going to, yeah, as I was gonna say, I think a lot of times they're just going to end up abrading my thing here. Which isn't great for me, but is it terrible? It's kind of terrible, yeah. I think we just play Inti, attack, and then I can Lodestone Needle down their Brontodon, discard a land here. Oh, or I can do that. Um, not so bad, huh? I want to just do this now. Uh, I suppose so. They just replay the Brontodon. I think that's fine with me. Brontodon doesn't like do anything. They didn't attack. 
conundrum. So I think I'm attacking with the staunch crewmate, and then I'm gonna... This, this is on blocks too, but they're just gonna get... Loads. Do I want to load some needle or am I fine just eating their thing? Bronthodon... I mean, I think we discard that iceberg, TBH. This does make it three. I don't think they're gonna block if I do that. You get plus one, plus one. So we're gonna do this, discard iceberg. Do that. They're gonna block almost certainly. Cogwork Wrestler on the Burning Sun Cavalry. And then I think I'm just going to play Waterwind Scout here. Because next turn I can play the Tomb Raider with Haste. Oh no, it just it just goes. It just I thought that it was... So it's until... Okay, it's templated weirdly. Until your next end step. Yeah, okay, so that actually... So that is this end step. Okay, psycho templating. Not going to deny the psychoticness of the templating that's going on. Uh, let's give Trample. It does. We're just Lodestone Needling then. Um, are we? They take like a billion damage. A literal billion damage. I could cast like 75% of the cards in my deck. thinking about it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm gonna smash. Three attacks. Discard this. Counter on you. Iceberg, nice. They take like a thousand. Iceberg here. They can blow up like my cog work and hit me next turn if they like really want to. I suppose that would be like allowed. They chose not to do that. Which I think is somewhat reasonable. Geological appraiser coming in. Would be enough. Oh that is haste. Okay. I mean they can't pay two to deal damage to my stuff, so there's that. It seems like it's probably good enough, huh? I guess I can discard the uh, the Waterwind Scout too. Yeah, let's let's discard the Waterwind Scout. Uh, yep. Discard this. Uh, I guess. that you're going to get the counter and then we're going to go like this kill all your stuff and they're off it <laughs> yeah that was pretty good that was solid so that's why that's why cog work. By the way, if you so th this is why cog works so good in like aggressive decks and stuff is you can just like attack. You just get to give like free attacks like in that game you saw, just so many attacks that were just truly unbelievable. Um, and I think I played the NT mostly right. I don't know. It's not one hundred percent clear whether or not I did. The nice thing about it in this deck specifically is that it, like my curve tops out at four, so. I can cast like pretty much everything that hits, even if I spend like two mana pre combat, which is nice. It's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, it is good in cheaper, cheaper curved decks, and this is like a style. Of, this is just a good style of deck, right? Like you get to, you know, cheap cards are good, right? Two drops are two drops are good, and this deck has a lot of two drops. That is one. Th that is one thing about this format that I do really like, uh, is that unlike Wilds of Eldraine, I don't feel like I'm always at like a loss for two drops 
Like when Miles of Eldraine, it was like, oh man, I'm halfway through the draft and I need like four two drops or my deck isn't functional. <laughs> like, you know, like that kind of stuff doesn't really happen here. Uh, we don't play island. We never play island. Forgot about that. You never want to tell them that you don't have cog work. You know what I mean? It's important to play um, the land. Now, this is like a really like minor thing that doesn't actually matter that much. Um, but yeah, uh, iceberg versus pirates. I'm gonna take pirates. Just fits in my curve nicely here. Iceberg's good too. There's no denying it. Am I braiding that? I am going to abrade that, yeah. As much as I do not want to abrade that, I think I'm just abrading it. <laughs> because if I don't abrade it, it's going to just take over the game, which I don't really want. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, I'm just going to jam the Waterwind Scout here, and then do I want to explore on it? No, because I want Wailing Pirates to be up. I'm going to attack into Cogwork Wrestler face up. Interesting choice. Sometimes the Cogwork Wrestler is face up. And, I mean, honestly, like, they may, like I find myself in spots where I know my opponent has Cogwork Wrestler, and I'm like, well, still attacking. Because, <laughs> honestly, see, they, they might have been right. right. They had Charter Course. Like, this might be their only play this turn. It seems like that was the case. Uh, this is going to be pretty good, huh? Do we just discard Wailing Pirates? I think, I think I'm going to be very conservative and not do that. may have the counter. Oh, you hit the land anyway. Gaming enthusiasm. Easy. Easy game, easy life. <laughs> easy game, easy life. Uh, and I have the Waylaying Pirates still. Opponent is dead on board. Three. I, mean, I assume they're dead on board. They are. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, this card. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't really give more of a more of a good impression of this deck than that game just just did like that was about as flattering as it's as it's gonna get um really and truly just out card quality and people just base i think every single card that i cast that game was a two for one yeah every single card that i cast that game was a two for one so that one's just gonna go it's not good enough my deck is plenty good to be mulliganing that um how do i feel about putting a mountain back I on the play? I have, like... Yeah, I'm gonna put a mountain back here, actually. I'm gonna come to regret this decision at some point, I promise, because, like, that's just always how it goes. But... I don't know. A lot Again, a lot of my stuff in my deck is two mana. Alright, well, now I immediately regret it. I have I regret everything. I, I, I'm a fool. I'm foolish. And I deserve to not draw a third land, to be honest. To be perfectly honest with you, ah, but never punished. But in the wise words of uh, many people, never punished. And, uh, and I'm just gonna pass. I think I'm just lodestone needling like anything here. Well, that's anything at all, I guess. For lodestone needling it. Maybe I'm no. I think I am because I can craft with my iceberg. Is that terrible? I mean, it isn't good. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I would rather have this be in play than not be in play. It's honestly highly possible I was supposed to just um, lodestone needle the treasure. That would be an interesting. That would be an interesting play that might actually be better. I can blunder now though, which is pretty good. I can blunder their tap pirate. I mean, blundering a tap pirate's not the best, but look at this done. Tom Tom not doing anything. And I'm gonna go. Well, I'm gonna rip a land easy every time. I didn't rip a land. Well, some would say that means I'm bad at the game. I'd be inclined to agree. I'm just gonna bounce that. I'm just gonna do the old time walk. 
pit it for six. And pass here. I think it's too bad to not pit them for six. Okay, that thing. Sure, whatever. Sure, man, whatever, who cares? You're at four. This, is, this makes like a ton of tokens, so just like don't let them make creature tokens, I guess, is the moral of this story. It's also about to be untapped, which is kind of bad for me, no denying that. At least I have tons of Cogwork Wrestlers that make this attack really good for me. I think I am going to save both. They do have a 6 6 Vigilance in play, which is pretty bad, but. Now I can just, like, attack with a bunch of stuff, potentially. I don't know. It's possible that playing the Waterwind Scout was better because. Nah, it probably was better. Because then I'm, like, representing a clock that. Scry three. Wait, this are they dead on board? Block, 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 take two. No, they're not dead on board. I can't put them to two. I guess well the problem is they are guaranteed to hit a land, but that doesn't actually matter because I'm gonna die. I could just draw removal too. I didn't draw removal. Rude. I think I'm going to Waterwind Scout and explore on the Cogwork Wrestler. So they hit me back down to... No, ah, hmm. So if they, may, if they get to flip the Clay Fire Bricks, I probably just lose, huh? I guess I could explore on the Waylaying Pirate. No, that's not good either. I guess I'll do it on here. Not attack. I don't know. This this is uh, this is this is not. I'm not. I'm not thrilled about this. I don't know. This could be a huge mistake. Torch. Oh well. Now I'm glad I explored on my scout. Menace. Okay, that doesn't do anything. So what are they doing? Wait, this isn't. Is this good? I don't think this is good. So I can block. It's not great for me. I mean, this is the best block I have, and I think I am making it. I don't have much of a choice. I mean, it's, it's probably just so much better to block. Yeah, they can flip their thing, but I have like a lethal attacker. Oh, I guess I could flip this, and like, if I hit, if I. S I could flip this, and if I hit the explorer correctly, I just win. So that's probably good. Probably wise to do that. Come on, one time. Dang it. I should have tapped mountain, obviously. Iceberg. Iceberg lettuce. Put him to one. They can flip the clay flyer bricks here, but if they do that, they die. So I'm not super worried about that happening. What does this do? Shamil. All right. Well, they better hope they hit something here. Uh, yeah, I th think I like blocks. 
because again, I it doesn't like I, I have I mean, me that me ah, I guess I don't know. I hit petrify. God damn it. Well, I guess I'm glad I blocked because like if I didn't, I was just gonna die. Uh, I think we just do this, huh? Miss. Miss. Interesting. Unfortunate. Could have had could have had an iceberg flipped in play. Ah, I'm gonna lose now. <laughs> I hit the goddamn removal spell off the Chamil. Oh no. And they can craft and gain life. What a nightmare. And they get to flip the thing back? Oh no. It's all falling apart. It's all falling apart so fast. It's all falling apart so fast. It's all falling apart so fast. Well, now I'm never blocking, so... I think they get that thing back, right? Doesn't it Doesn't it come back? I think it comes back. Alright, well, that's not bad. See, why couldn't you hit that last time? Discarded that. Oh. Hmm. <sighs> well... This raptor, but it doesn't. It, all it does is prevent them from casting spells on my turn, which, to be perfectly honest with you, it doesn't really accomplish much. No. All right, we'll flip the we'll flip the dang iceberg. We'll flip the iceberg. No attacks. Cry myself to sleep because I'm. I think I'm actually just dead. I think I'm just dead to sunshot militia. What an unfortunate situation this game presented itself as. I was so close to killing them. And if I had just played the Waterwind Scout that turn previously, I probably would have won this game. Because I could have let the things trade off, and then I would have played Waterwind Scout. They didn't have removal, so I would have been able to... They did have Torch, actually. So if I had played the Waterwind Scout before, I would have lost to the Torch. So there is that. I think I'm not, st I'm still not technically dead, I think. I believe. I'm gonna discover twice though, so it's like pretty unlikely they don't find stuff. I suppose they, I, okay, I countered, yeah, they have tons and tons of stuff. Surely I'll just find removal for their enchantment that I don't think I even have in my whole deck, but. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, they're really doing it over there. I am just dead, I think. Well, actually, only has a sorcery, so actually, if I draw removal for the Petrify. Uh, I don't have any ways of ending the game. Yeah, it doesn't work, because they just have too much stuff. Alright, you got me. You got me, opponent. You got me. Again, so actually, I would not have won if I played the Waterwind Scout that turn earlier, because I would have lost it to the Torch. But, I don't know, I might have had better blocks. It was going to be a tough game, either way. I mean, again, so it came down to them hitting a removal spell off of their Discover, right? They hit removal spell off Discover 5, and I lost. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> You know, sometimes you, you lose that. They they got, you know, very fortunate to win that game at the end. Um, could have been some different lines taken, but it, it's it's unclear. It's unclear whether that would have actually been better. Could review the logs and see, but... Well, uh, that was a mulligan game, too. Mulligan that game. So you can't win your mulligan. You can't always win your mulligans, huh? Puzzle door coming into play. So I think I like Crewmate over Iceberg, just because more creatures, more better. Well, it makes the Wrestler better, for sure. Okay, Riverhold Scout. This actually may change the equation. It does not change the equation. We're just going to go Crewmate. Sometimes I miss with this. I missed last game. 
Iceberg, sure. Definitely want to play Island here. Well, actually, it's kind of unclear. Well, I'm playing Raptor either way, right? Well, I'm not playing Raptor either way. I guess, theoretically, my opponent has drawn cards over there. So they don't have an island. No. I think we just go Scythe Cloud Raptor. No attacks. I don't know. If I'm playing Scythe Cloud Raptor, should I be blocking? Maybe. Maybe I'm supposed to be blocking. I am set up well for a longer game. The Cogwork Wrestler's probably going to get value at some point. Um, they are... They didn't take Lodestone Needle. That's concerning. That's, like, really bad news. Because Lodestone Needle's good. I mean, actually, it being in the graveyard, I guess, could theoretically... like, But no, they're going to artifact in the graveyard. Yeah, they didn't take Lodestone Needle. That's... I guess... Did they need lands? They just drew two lands. Okay, that card is illegal. Will uh, not be not be playing that. I guess I'll attack. Get in there, Scythe Claw Raptor. All right. More Scythe Claw Raptors. They have an abrade, you know. I mean, they take four more damage. They, so their best play that I guess. So the the choice last turn was probably between schooner and um, I'll discard mountain, exile mountain. Hidden volcano could come up in this game. So they are gonna just attack. So we're gonna explore, okay. Uh, what if they have a braid? Then I'll cry. Um, I guess I would rather just trade the Scythe Cloud Raptor for the Sooner Schooner. I think that's fine. This way, I preserve the Cogwork Wrestler, and I like get like I'm I'm honestly like genuinely okay with that because they found a red for that. Okay, my turn. Iceberg here, I think for sure. Build an island. Okay, we're gonna just go Tomb Raider. Just attack with this one. Or am I smashing all? I don't want to smash all. Maybe just attack with these two. No, maybe just, just the raptor, actually. So we have 12, and then we pass. So they, I feel like they have a braid. I don't know. I just kind of like get that vibe. It could be wrong. They've had held two mana up every turn. Um, they're getting more caves. They also might have the cave in. The cave in wouldn't actually be that bad for me because it kills their entire board. Uh, and I have like a bunch of value stuff. Like I have icebergs that are coming up. I have other miscellaneous things. Uh, okay. So we'll do this. Oh, forgot about that. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, it is fine. Hit me for four. Hit me for four. See if I care. I don't really want a pirates, because I don't really care if any of their things blocks. I think I'm going to iceberg... The old iceberg here. Keep milling my lands that I want to draw. Now I could pirates. 
tap down the scampering surveyor. Does it lose to the wrath too hard? Probably, yeah. So how often, how likely do they, are they to have the wrath? They're pretty likely to have it. Okay, is the wrath inbound? Am I going to cry myself to sleep? One, two, three caves in play right now. I feel like they definitely have the wrath. I feel like the cave in is coming here. Yeah, there it is. Not a surprise. Played around it by not playing the pirate, and then now I can start getting after it with icebergs. Or I could just play Waterwind Scout and explore. How likely is it that they have removal though, really? Surely my opponent doesn't have removal for a 6-6. Six, six. Wait, wasn't I playing around them having a braid this whole game? I don't know. Both of the lines aren't great into a braid. Hmm. Yeah, that's not very good for me. <laughs> there is good news, though. I can tap down their thing. Soul Coil Viper. Yeah, sure. Right, I'm going to Pirates, then. So we're going to go Pirates, the Carnosaur. Tap down the Companion. Tap this down. They have to jump with Waterman Scout if they're jumping. They put Soul Call Viper on top. They took it. Now we play my Waterwind Scout. So it's not looking the best, but so once again, I find myself in a similar spot to last game where I'm like, eh, my opponent might just be able to get out of it here. Cave-in, you know, is a really good card. If they have another cave-in, I am probably going to be dead. Actually, I'll, I think, well, if they cast another cave-in now, they just lose. Um, obviously, but... They topped Soul Coil Viper, which really scares me, because it makes me feel like I'm just dead. Okay, so the leech is a problem. I could find removal for the leech. I guess I can explore on my Waterwind Scout. See if I have removal on top. I have a Cogwork Wrestler. Not exactly going to do it. that goes into the graveyard. So what am I doing? I attack all, tap down the leech. They have 13 power left in play. They have to chump, chump, go to one. I have a 6-6. Six, six. They can trade. What if they kill it? What if they kill it? Am I dead? I'm not dead. I mean, they have to have room. So, they're, so they, I know they're drawing this, so they have to have room. Okay, so actually, I think this goes into the yard. Um, I think I'm going to make a 6-6. Six, six. Three attackers, tap this. They have to jump, and then they're just going to jump. It doesn't really matter which one they jump here. Um, 
Iceberg. Hogwarts Wrestler. So now I can block the leech. I know they're drawing Sahili, which doesn't do anything. So we'll quit I guess the question is do I block the leech or do I tap down the, or do I not? And it's a good question. So the last card, what is the last card in their hand likely? It's highly possible that they need to hit like something off of a discover land here. It seems likely even to me. Let's see the last card. If it's removal, I am going to cry. I'm not going to deny it because I am in a bad spot to that. Especially if it's cheap enough to allow them to play both of their creatures, then I just lose this game and can't win. But at that stage, I was never winning. Ugh. Okay. Minus three mana, but they do get to take the best card from their top four. They can't actually tap these for call. They can't. they actually may have caused themselves to not be able to. So they put this back. So I think I do have to block. Or do I? I think I. I think I should block. Yeah, I think I need to block. Because if they drew like a if they drew like a deal, I don't know. Maybe that's a stupid block and like really terrible. Wait, they can't play both though, or they die. I guess they don't die, huh? Hmm. Yeah, that's why you don't block, I guess, is if they hit a land there, they can play both. I thought these would have cost them. Oh, they can tap for colorless. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do here is untap my Iceberg Titan when I attack. I don't want them to be able to reanimate this, so I have to attack all. Uh, who gets to explore? Does it really matter that much? think you're going to get to explore. I don't know, this could be stupid. Uh, super relevant text. They have to block both. They have to jump twice. Jump both, and then they have to have. This does not work. You have to double jump here, or they die. They go to three. I uh, could just die here very easily. In before dead. Oh no. Chart of course. Okay. That's not. That's not especially thrilling. I'm not super excited about the fact that they discarded the thing. That is castable. <laughs> ah. Please don't. Please don't do this. Okay, fine. We're fine. We are fine. I just have to block. One is not equal to zero. Whew. Just enough. Just enough. That would have been helpful last turn. <laughs> just enough. Again, probably, like, so blocking the Gargantuan Leech is an interesting decision. I guess on the like what my I guess my real question is what am I actually playing around by blocking it? Probably nothing. I'm probably playing around nothing because if they have a plus two trick, I lose the game anyway because they kill my thing for free. 
Um, and like I'm playing around to direct face damage is what I'm playing around with four mana. They had four mana up. I'm playing around like direct face damage. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't think there is direct base damage, so I don't think I was ever supposed to block. I think I was supposed to say, nope, you can't kill me from two. I guess in black, I don't know, it's probably, in black is there, like, face damage? Deal two to your opponent. I don't think there really is. I think I was just never supposed to block. I think blocking was just terrible, so I should never have done it. I think I should have just said, nope, I'm going to two. Um, and, uh, and done that. I think that would have been better. I think that would have been better. Because, again, it's like, what am I actually, like, genuinely playing around? And the answer is nothing, so... Um, I think in in some sets, you could it could be right to block there. I think I'm just not supposed to... I think I was just not supposed to block. I, my deck is good enough to mulligan this hand, right? I can mulligan this hand. I think so. <laughs> I did it, so I obviously think that I can do it. So I'm gonna put Iceberg back. We'll put that Iceberg back. Iceberg Lettuce. Iceberg Lettuce, Iceberg Lettuce. Hmm, that's a suspicious amount of holding up mana you have going on over there. Very suspicious. Oh, they're just gonna cast it. I don't really know why, but they, they did. I think my Inti's probably going to die, but that's okay. Yeah. I, I can't really use it super well with this hand anyway, because I'm low on cards. Let's go Scythe Claw. And then I have Lodestone Needle or a Cogwork Wrestler. If they have second Abrade, I do kind of just lose here. Keeping a hand with a Braid into, like, nothing would not have done super well for me here. As you can see, that's why I didn't do it. Get in there. I'm just gonna pirate. I'm just gonna go plundering pirate. I don't necessarily love this, because they do get to keep the Oaken Siren around and stuff. Um, like, I kind of want to Lodestone Needle the Oaken Siren. Sure. I guess that's kind of fine. So they kept red mana up. Noted. Red Ignatilus. Sure. Alright, um, I'm not going to bother attacking, it seems horrible for me, so we're just going to play the raptor and move on with our lives. So the question is, do I want to lodestone needle down the oaken siren? My answer to that question is yes, I think I do. No, actually I don't think that I do. Because I want to be able to hold up the cogwork wrestlers in case of shenanigans. Case of there being, uh, in case of there being an issue that we're gonna have. Okay, that does not do anything. I guess they can cast it, so that it does something in that sense. Still pretty far ahead on the damage base here. I think I'm lodestone needling down the Hermetic Nautilus. Ow, minus four. We're going all the way in. We're just eating all their stuff. We're putting him to 12. I don't know if this is actually good. Again, I think I, I think I once again was probably supposed to hold back the second Cogwork Wrestler. 
So they're just gonna oak me. They're gonna just go oak tober on my on me here. That's probably supposed to go into the graveyard. Another one. They did hit it. They hit both. They're a god at gaming. How bad is attacking? It seems kind of bad at the current juncture. Um, we are going to explore on the poor pirate, I think. So if I hit a non-land, didn't hit a non-land. I'm just gonna attack with the Scythe Claw Raptor then. But if they have a Coggers, well, you know, if they have a Cogwork Wrestler, so be it. They did not have it though. I'm gonna just play this. I'm just going to play this. Uh... Oh, that's like not even a thing, okay. We exploring, baby. We're exploring deep into the ocean. Goodbye, Cogwork Wrestler. May you ride off into the sunset. Well, now I'm just going to start Lodestone Needling every turn. I have two Flyers in play. Okay, that's a good card. Oh, Coggers. Coggers! Oh, they just cast it. Why, what are people doing? Why, dude? Why? <laughs> I guess they were conceding. Okay. Is why. That's why they were casting. I see. I understand. Now it makes sense. See, it didn't make sense before, but now it makes sense. This has been a, you know, when you're playing in Mythic, there are, there are difficult games. You know, you have to play have to play against good opponents sometimes. You know, it's not, uh, not the way it goes. I should add, like, music to these videos. Some type of, like, noise, but I don't know what I would add. Um, like what would be good? People use like the RuneScape OST for stuff. Maybe that would be good. Maybe that would be a good thing to like have on uh, on uh, this type of stuff. So I'm not just like talking to talking over like a bunch of nothingness. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm mulliganed a lot of hands with this deck, but I think I'm mulliganing another one. <laughs> mulliganed a lot of hands, but I think we're doing it again. Yeah, we're definitely, and I'm happy I did. I was, was going to say, this deck I think is good enough to be mulliganing. Um, and when I say that, like people a lot of times think of mulliganing as like bad decks mulligan and good decks don't. But a lot of times it's the opposite, at least, you know, and like when someone, I forget who, I think, you know, NCAA talks about this, the uh, streamer and whatnot, about how like people like don't mulligan the, uh, oh, this is an interesting term that I have to do here. Like when you're a good deck, you should just mulligan more if you have a bad hand, like a mediocre hand, because you are going to be able to make up for the card disadvantage so much better than, I think I'm playing the pirate. This is a tough turn, actually. I think I am going to play the pirate, though. Because they want to play Axe Jaw. And... They do that pre-combat, which... It's not like... I think I'll just trade. Um, I think I'll just trade with the Kin Caller, if they allow me to. I don't think it's really that good to use Cog work here. If it's necessary, it's necessary, but I think the trade is just good for me here, so we'll we'll see. Yep, trade's fine. And I think I just go Raptor next turn? Belligerent Yearling, okay. Okay, I don't love that for me. They're just gonna tap some stuff, deal damage, that's fine. I don't think Sunshine Militia is very good in red-green for the reasons you're kinda seeing. I mean, they mulligan, so that's part of it, but... That's a good card. So I think I'm going to play this for sure. And then I think I'm just playing Waterwind Scout. Because it blocks okay. I 
guess theoretically I don't want to attack with my 2-2 two -two because they're going to play this and it's going to become base power 4, but I guess I can't... Yeah, I have... I have, I have like, I'm, I feel, I kind of feel like I'm the control deck. I'm, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm not the beat down here. They're at 23, first of all. And like, second of all, they're going to play Axe Draw this turn if they can, pre-combat. Because it obviously makes their yearling much bigger. But by holding the, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> well... That's going to be a problem. I mean, I guess they do need lands, so that is... That makes sense. So they do need to hit land drops, but... Man, that... It looks... It looks bad. I'm going to pro I promise it does not look good. Um, I also need to hit my land drops. Are they going to tap their stuff? Sure. Here, put me to 14. Not... Not enormously... Pressed by that. Don't really care about abrading their guy. I think we explore first. No. And then I'm just gonna play Raptor. And I have to take four damage if I want to use the Cogwork Wrestler now, but I assume they have something to cast. And I mean, obviously they have two spells in their hand. It depends on what how good they are, whether or not they have a chance in this game. They put their, like, Earthshaker Dreadmaw on the bottom. Oh, that's totally fine. I'm gonna let that go. Not also because it, partially because, it, you know, me not letting it go doesn't do anything. But, <laughs> so that is part of it. I wonder if I'm supposed to be bolting the bird here. I would just be thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have this happen. Just absolutely feeling blessed on this day. Do this, and we're gonna explore. My guy did hit a land drop. I don't really want to abrade here. Ah, uh, they could cast something like large, and then I'm sad. Like, they, what what is likely in their hand? Is it a six drop? Is it the cavern stomper? Cavern stomper is what we're worried about. is this? Did you think I was not blocking? I don't know. These creatures fight each other. Alright, we'll do this. That seems like a good time to use the cog work seems solid. It just seemed like the thing to do, you know? Nope, cog work in the trash. Out. You did, you did, you did, you did good, friend. You did, 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 ah, oh man, I can't speak anymore. So if they do draw like a large, if they draw basically land five into Cavern Stomper, am I a little bit sad? Not really, I have Wailing Pirates. Oh, <laughs> rumbling rock slide. Well, that's a little bit embarrassing. I'm just, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It's a mildly embarrassing card to be playing. Do, 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 do. We're just going to just go through the motions of this turn. We did hit a land. That's nice. I'll just happily trade, to be honest, if they were to... I could even have, like, abraded their guy. I just don't think I... Like, even if they play a six drop, who cares? So... <laughs> That's a nice one. Nice little game there. Both of us mulliganed, and you know, my deck mulligans pretty well, so that is part of it. I think I've mulliganed, what, four hands? Three hands? Something like that? I think I've won all the games that I've mulliganed, too. No, I lost. I lost this game three. It was a mulligan that I lost, I think. The one, the one loss that I have, I think, was a mulligan loss. Yeah, we'll keep this one. We're just gonna go one drop on one. I think 
Because I have three lands that are untapped, I don't really see an enormous reason. And I have a braid to play on turn three with a tap land. Okay. Interesting. I kind of want to play the crewmate now. Because it blocks the Tomb Raider better. I missed! Rude. Like, I'm... I'm much happier to be able to just block the Goblin Tomb Raider. And theoretically, it could have given me something else to do. Oh, I don't care about this. Are they really going to do this? Is this good? What about this is good, first of all? Hornet, ask yourself if this is actually a good thing that you want to do. Ask yourself if this play makes any sense. Oh, no, they're doing it. <laughs> they don't even deal damage to me. They're... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. Yeah, now we're doing this. Now we're doing this, for sure. So why? what would compel a person to make such a play? What cards could they have in hand that would like make that viable? Because there's there must be some reason they wanted to trade so bad. It's not it's not coming to me yet. Uh, do I want to abrade that? I don't really care about its existence at all. I think I am going to abrade it though, maybe, because it can attack, and then, if, I'm, if I was planning on abrading it, I should have done it before, but I think I will just abrade it. It's not great, but it does mean the torch isn't killing my Waterwind Scout next turn. I don't know. It seems good to me. I could have waited till their turn when they equipped it. I think that's just unnecessarily risky here though. Yeah, they get, to, they get one extra mana, like... Is it bad? Yeah, it's not good. We can we can be clear on that, but mm -hmm. do this. Let's see what's in the box. Is there anything in the box here? No, there's not at the moment. Because I could hit a uh, another goblin tomb raider. I actually don't have one in my deck, so I couldn't have that happen. Theoretically, they could unlucky drop this thing to the top of my deck. Ooh. Lodestone Needle seems great here. So they're probably putting something on top of my deck. Or they're bouncing something. Either is fine. Are they idling me? Sure. Deal. No problem. No problem. So now I'm going to Lodestone Needle their play. So I can craft the idol, it doesn't do anything. Oh, or I can just do that. That's not bad. Let's do that. They didn't even equip. They have a counter spell. Any coggers? Any coggers? Nope, they have another idol of the deep king. <laughs> uh, sure. Idol of the deep king really not getting it done here. All their creatures don't do anything, so that's nice. I, the one unfortunate thing here is I don't have any like craftable stuff. They're gonna equip, but I'm gonna tap it down. They're gonna make what? Sure. You might as well go to combat before you do this, because I am going to be lodestone needling your guy. It's not even that good, but... I am going to just do it, because... There's basically no reason not to. They know I have the lodestone needle. I want the lodestone needle in play. Uh... They get hit for five here. We are getting close to the point where they're going to be able to do stuff. <sighs> I kind of wish I had more artifacts. 
They're going to craft into a thing and then equip it to the Oaken Siren. That's fine. That ain't so bad. I think I'm just gonna hidden volcano. Oh, nice. Another iceberg. They're now at six. So the problem is that they can now actually start dealing damage to me and also use the torch if they want which i think they're going to do i'd be really surprised if they didn't use the torch Uh, do I make a... First we're just going to play the raptor because I want to make sure that we're safe. Then I think I'm crafting lodestone needle. Actually, hold on. Let me get it first. I kind of have to block. There's really not... like. You could go to three, but are you really winning that game? Probably aren't. Probably not winning this game either, the game that I have ever drawn a Cogwork Wrestler. Do I want to load some needle now? Yeah, I suppose, I suppose I do. I suppose I do. I suppose I would like to have the option to explore next turn. All right, another successful escapade here, and we're we're going for our uh, we're going for the trophy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You already know. You know it's me. You already know it's me. I'm 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 him. They forgot that I'm him. Try to pull the fast one in the cytoplasm gels. I don't know where my phone is. For, I don't know. I've lost my phone. The modern, a modern tragedy. Oh wait, there it is on the floor. Ah, I found it. I found my phone, guys. Are you proud of me? Oh boy. Gotta get ready to go. Gotta get. Gotta get up. For, oh, it's NCAA. Oh no. My record. I was just talking about NCAA like ten seconds ago. I'm gonna keep this. And oh no, see, he's got Cynic. Oh wow, this is actually a tough decision. So I can bolt the bird or I can play Inti. I'm gonna play Inti. Uh, I don't know if that's actually good or not, but. I currently don't have any regrets. Um, I should actually have not played that land. Hmm. So if I attack, so what if he explores? How good is that for him? Yeah, it's kind of gross. Just gonna play iceberg. <laughs> so he knows about cog work now. Which isn't great for me. Let's keep it real. Hmm. I'm probably just gonna kill the Waterwind Scout next turn. Nope, I'm probably just going to kill the Oak and Siren next turn. Yep. I'm just going to 
do this because he knows, so there's no point in holding it up because he knows I have it. Um, all right, wait, hold on. Discard Island, please. Mountain. I'm going to abrade your Oaken Siren. Not super thrilled about this, but I think it's fine. Preventing the explorer is good. I don't know, like, get the explorer and he gets the explorer anyways. He always gets what he wants. He always gets what he wants. Take another six here. That's not bad. That is not bad. And okay, play land. I think we're going to play Iceberg. Another play. Can I take another whatever amount of damage? If he has the ability to explore, he's going to do it. So we'll see. Let's see if he's got it. He does have the ability to explore. Well, I'm taking like 8 million here. I'm just going to block. It was probably bad to just play the iceberg, I think. I just should have played Scout and held up Needle. You may blow me out here, sir. I didn't get blown out. A blessing. Hmm. Well. Well, well, well. Do I ever explore first? Difficulty, difficult decisions. I guess I should explore first, huh? That's going in the trash. Um. Pass. Lodestone Needle up. He's got the Puzzle Door. Here comes the Diesel Dwarf. The Diesel is coming in. Mm -hmm. So if we go to combat, I think I need to tap down. Well, it's kind of difficult actually because. So he can't get into this turn with the Explorer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to Lodestone Needle the Oaken Siren. So he's going to get the Puzzle Door value, sure. I'm not sure that this actually matters that much. It's two stun counters. He's going to have to jump. And then... 
I mean, we'll see here. He gets another thing to play too, which isn't great. Oh, wow. So that's going into the graveyard. That's concerning. It means I'm probably losing my NT here. I guess he can just still attack with this, huh? Can he? Seems to think he can. So, what if I jump with Cogward Wrestler? Is it good? Is there anything about it that's good? Uh, he could have plus three, plus three. So he can trample on my six, six. So I can prevent myself to from dying to explore trigger next turn. So he could have explored this turn, but he chosen. Well, he couldn't do it pre-combat. I think I am gonna actually block. Cavern Stomper. Okay. Any removal spells in my deck? Guess I should do this first. Let's take a look, see if I can find an artifact removal spell, of which there are several. Um, so I should explore. Braid. Braid ain't bad. Yeah, I think this is probably better. I mean, I was gonna abrade that anyway, but I actually wasn't gonna abrade it anyway. It's probably going to. So he gets a creature card. Might be able to explore. Actually, I think I'm dealing four damage. You can deal three damage, four damage to me. I'm just dead to the trick anyway. I think I'm just gonna upgrade the Cavern Stomper to deal an additional three damage. So he's drawing. Okay. <laughs> All right, NCA, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. <laughs> I will kill. Oh wait, hold on. Let's just freaking clicked through it, but that would have been horrible. So he'll go to four. That was my plan, potentially. Anyways, okay. So he's drawing a creature here, and then I guess I mean, is it better to draw a creature? Or is it better to hit a nursery? Guess we shall see. Creature doesn't kill NT most likely. There are some that do, but. So I think, because if I had not chumped with the cog work last turn, I would be dead. If I had not chumped with the cog work last turn, I would have died. <laughs> now I'm at, as it stands, I'm at one. He's going to explore. Um, he's not going to explore. All right, we're going to do this then. Yeah. 
So I think he had the the he may have had the like yeah I can tap down the the explore thing or the the two four and then get there. All right, well that was a uh, you know <laughs> that's a uh, that's a trophy right there, baby. And this card is super busted. So Inti just carrying in that last that last game took it all the way to the house uh, against blue green, which that's a hard time dealing with it. All the cards in this deck were unbelievably good. I don't think I made any bad choices in terms of deck building, although I think if you wanted to play some torches or this, or like even Confounding Riddle would probably have been okay. Puzzle Doors would have been okay. I don't know. Deck was just great. So uh, thanks for watching. See you next time, maybe. Probably not. Who knows?